Welcome to I May Be Wrong. I don't know what this world is coming to. But I don't think so. We're broadcasting from the greater Nashville area. The home of country music. Beyond the borders of political correctness and identity politics. Facts and faith are our demarcations. Truth lights our path. Here's the Barry White of Podcast Radio. The venerable Alfonso Ashworth. Well, welcome to another exciting episode of I May Be Wrong, But I Don't Think So. Of course, you can join us on the website every Wednesday. Uh, we broadcast live. Of course, you can find us on I May Be Wrong, But I Don't Think So dot com uh, on the website. We broadcast at, at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Central, and of course, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. But every Wednesday, you can find us here. We got a great guest for you. But before we get started, we got a lot of things I want to do. One thing I want to do is thank my audience. I want to thank all of those who we call the chosen. And of course, we are in chat room. Our chat room is called the furnace. Now, if you want to be a furnace walker, you have to join us in the chat room and you have to comment. And of course, you can get uh, badges and rewards and all sorts of things if you become a a furnace walker of course i want to thank also the ones who support the show financially and emotionally it's a lot of work it's a lot of time involved in doing this I'm getting our guest on i got a great guest in the queue by the way uh d rock he's going to be our guest for for the next 30 minutes or so uh we're going to get to him in just a minute he is sitting there waiting we're going to chop it up this guy is a real outlaw. Of course, he was raised in, on good music. This guy was raised on good music. His dad introduced to him to all kinds of music from Motown, country, blues, jazz. Uh, D, D, D's Texas roots go back as far as the Alamo. And it's what inspires his southern style, which, it, which you can hear in the songs he writes. Uh, Mojo Gumbo is the term D uses to describe all the different styles he fuses together in his music. This guy is a number one outlaw. And, and it, this is the perfect show for D because we love outlaws. And we love people who fight against the labels. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Fighting the labels of all kinds. Not just record labels, not just music labels, but also fighting labels as a person of color. You know, we can argue this all day. And of course, don't forget also that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This dreaded disease, cancer, has destroyed more lives and is taking more lives and, and affecting more families. Just about every family can can say that they have been affected in some way by cancer. And so this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're going to recognize that. Of course, we will be bringing on the guest in just a few minutes, uh, Mr. D-Rock. You know, the debate last night, I don't have time to go back over that. And, of course, if it comes up in the conversation, fine. All this stuff about impeachment, this is nothing but a smokescreen. There are millions of Americans that are tired of a do nothing Congress. They fight this president on every corner, despite that it's good for this country. The border, health care, the issues with our foreign policy. They fight him on every level. You're talking about fighting labels. The president is called a racist and there is no evidence whatsoever that President Trump is a racist, none whatsoever. You know, I hear it all the time. Uncle Tom, you know, sell out. You know, all the, you've heard me talk about this stuff. And, you know, my brother that's coming on, he has heard it all. He's had to deal with all these types of labels. And we're going to, of course, we're going to have him come on in just a second. You know, if you've not heard anything about D Rock, I'm going to let him tell you for himself what it is that he does and how he's done it for so long and at such a high level. Mr. D-Rock, welcome to the show. Al, good morning, my friend. I'm so happy to be on here with you, and I appreciate you inviting me to talk about myself, you know, life in our country, man, which we both love, so... It's an honor to be here with you, man. Well, I'll tell you what. 
Where did, do you remember where we met and under what circumstances? Do you remember uh, we met through a, a, an acquaintance uh, that, yes. that was our radio host in Nashville? And we were out in Antioch at a restaurant. Yes, yes, we were there. Yes. And that's the first time I met you, brother. And I tell yes. you what, I was I was impressed from day one about, one, your love for this country, your love for music, and your attitude about fighting against the labels. Tell my audience what it is in your background that gave you that fortitude, that gave you that mindset that no matter what, you're just going to forge ahead. What what gave you that? Okay, I'll try not to be long-winded, but, you know, um, I, the days of grandmothers and grandfathers really playing a major role in your lives, beside the parents, instilled something in me from a young age. My dad, all my family's from Texas except for me. I claim Texas because that's my roots. Right. But I was born in Los Angeles. But Denton, Texas and McKinney, Texas, I spent a lot of time in. And I can say this, those southern roots made me an oddity in Los Angeles. I bet. Based off I of bet. everybody that I was with. I was the weird kid. We were the strange family. They didn't understand that I had to be home before dark or I was in trouble. They didn't understand when my father was on the porch and I, he didn't see me coming from one end of the block or the other. If he went back inside and I wasn't there, I had issues. Right. They didn't have that type of discipline growing up. I did. And one thing that I was always told by my grandmother, my grandfather played guitar at no lessons. I remember him hitting that guitar on the front porch slide. He could play like anybody today. Right. Not a single lesson. And I watched that. I remember that. Also, my grandmother always told me, Desi, be who you is. You can be anything you want to be. Don't let anything stop you. And remember the things that are important. And that's what I've always done. Well, It was such a thing with my, I'll tell you a sense. One day I brought him a baseball mitt. My dad said, where'd you get that? I said, I found it. He said, oh, son, we don't find things. Let's walk back and take it and put it where, where someone left it. Right. That's how it was in my family. Wow. Morals. So that's how it came back to all people are the same. I get along with everyone. I watched my dad go out of his way to be kind to people that were in the service industry, cleaning ashtrays, mopping floors at, at department stores. He read, he'd give my nuts on the shoulder. How you doing? Cause he knows that quite often people just look down on those people and disrespect them. I saw my dad make sure he interacted with those people to make sure that they know that they were important too. So that's kind of how I was raised. Well, and you so, got good, and you got good, strong roots, no doubt about it, to be able yeah. to survive in the music industry for as long as you have and fighting yeah. the labels of, you know, well, you don't belong in this genre. Or you don't belong in that totally. genre. Uh, tell my audience, what is your secret? Not only I believe you got strong faith. And it's apparent mm-hmm. that you got that from your good morals, strong faith from oh, your yeah. family. But what is it? How have you survived in an industry that's the opposite of faith? You know, the indulgence, the do whatever you want to type thing. How have you survived and fought those labels? I, I will say that I'm trying to be funny. But one thing, the reason I didn't fall into any craziness uh, that, comes with this is industry from alcohol booze excessiveness right and i i tell everybody i am a mama's boy okay. i never wanted to come home in a box right and, and someone telling my mother something i did that she knows are completely out of character for me wow so it kept me away from those things because i didn't want the disappointment right. and the lifelong disappointment when that happens at at, at, at the rate it does in this industry where people lose their lives over indulgence. But the thing that's kept me going uh, beyond the, uh, being trying to be pigeonholed is that I live by a code of I belong wherever I go. So wherever I go, I'm supposed to be there. Right. And you will not stop me. You will not stop me. You might try to slow me down, but you'll never stop me. Right. 
and, and you know that's, that's a great I always roll. Yeah, and, and and that's why I think I, I I feel a brotherhood with you and and other individuals that were a part of that so that early Tea Party movement. Yes. You know that yes, that you, were. you know we're going to stand up and speak our peace no matter what yes, people indeed. say. And of course, yes, what what is it? Now we say fighting labels. Before yes. we get into that, tell my audience. Where can they find you, your music, and what you're doing, your tours, and all of that? Where okay. can they find that? Well, you can find D Rock. I spell it with two E's, and I did that. I'll tell you, that's a whole nother story, the D Rock. But I'm on Spotify, iTunes, all digital outlets. You can find my first and second album. Okay. You can find certain singles. I have some patriotic songs that I have out there, such as The Colors I Fly, um, Forgotten Soldiers. The uniform, you can find those also in those places. Uh, things coming up for me right now. Earlier this year, I was fortunate to sign with the independent label in the UK called Doctor John Surgery Records. Okay, and it was a blessing because as much as I am known in Nashville, it's more of a pat on the back, continue what you're doing, but not really open the door and say, come on, let's do this together. I'm kind of the lone gunman out here. I do it all myself. Right. I, have great, I have great relations and great friends who definitely help me, no question. But on the larger scale, that hasn't opened up. And it's nothing new. I wasn't expecting when I came here. I had my goals set for a certain, certain uh, uh, level of achievement, which I'm hitting now and, and, and going beyond. Uh, with, with, by signing with Dr. John's label, he has put my music throughout Europe, throughout Asia, I'm in New Zealand, I'm in uh, Australia, and I'm doing my first UK tour, which begins November 1st, at a festival that they sponsor. And it's a small tour, but for me it's huge because I get to play my own music and make the networks in person now by being able to I can meet people and, and talk to people and let them know how, how, how I role as a musician and as a businessman and I've got tons of help I mean there's an individual named Nigel Bromley who's played with George Michael Elton John he's going to yeah. be playing drums with me that's a big deal right. to have someone of his stature playing with me and putting a major a, a, a tremendous band together to back me up for these shows I'm doing so I'm looking forward to it like I said it's a short tour but it's enough to let people know that I have arrived Yes. And I'm not going anywhere but forward with this. Next year we'll play longer, we'll play more countries. But well, uh, that's what the, this UK tour is kicking things off. Well, well, and you know what? I hope that people find out more about you and your music, but also the the man, the person, Thank who you. you are. What what's made you this phenomenal musician is your family, your background, your roots, your determination. Fighting against the labels, as you just said, the big corporate music labels here and not realizing that, look, it's just like you say, a pat on the back. Now, let's talk about a different kind of label. Let's talk yes. about a label that you have probably felt and and seen over the years the same way as, that I have is that why are you a patriot? Why are you you know, why do you fly the flag why do you sing patriotic songs? You know, you, you've been oppressed. You've been your ancestors were slaves and, and the man has kept you down. Why is it that you continue to to fight against those labels? Uh, one of the main reasons is that uh, and, I, and I don't mean to generalize, but a lot of people don't understand world history. Right. What took place amongst us and our black people here in America as a part of world history. It was nothing new. It was diabolical. It was severe. It was tragic. It was the worst thing you can imagine. Right. But understanding humankind and watching how we went from that to where we are today, I can't, I can't be with anything but appreciative that people have stood up for what Dr. Martin Luther King said, for what they put on paper. And we, we are doing that. We have done that. Right. We had a black president in America. Come on now. I may not have agreed. I may not have agreed with him, but we had a black president that ran this country for eight years. So that 
there, when I hear of this nonsense, I say, wait a minute. Do you understand where we've come from? Right. To where we went to with eight years of that? Right. Now, with that being said, being patient means that I do believe what the founders put together. It's never been done in history before. Amen. Inalienable rights, a constitution where the, gov- where the government is on paper explains how they work for us, not yes. the way, other way around. That's never been done before. We're, we're so not, you know, the, these... and, and, you know, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a lot of mm-hmm. people don't realize that even in the United Kingdom, the citizens there are still known as subjects. Yes, they are. They're Thank still you. known as sub. They'll tell you we're subjects of the crown. We're subjects <laughs> of the uh, the royal the royal uh, hierarchy. But in America, yes, yes. in yes. America, it's the people first. And the government comes from the people. But I'll let you finish your thoughts on that, because I think it's very important that we realize that, like you said, we need to remember not only where we come from, but where we are and where we're going. Go ahead, brother. Yes. Um, Being a a, a a fan of history, the plight and the uh, uh, status and the... uh, uh, um, uh, what can I say? The, the victory mm-hmm. of where we've come as black people. I am an, I'm an American. So what happens, I, but I do have a, a, a history of, of every culture has a history. Right. But the wonderful thing about America and the first time it's ever been done is that it's supposed to be a melting pot of cultures. It's, it's supposed to be where we all... It doesn't matter where you come from. Once you come here, whether it's in India, Pakistan, wherever. Uh, Uganda, wherever, you are now an American. We have a brotherhood now because we have shared the same values. And people, uh, I don't have a chip on my shoulder. We have strived to be a better, uh, more perfect union, and it's happening all the time. That's a good, that's a good word to use. Time. We're striving for a more perfect union. It, nothing is perfect, but we're striving toward that mark uh, and we're getting better at it. You know, that's why I come up against the people who, you know, of course, I know that you have uh, a, a, I've got different races in my background. I know yeah, you do yeah, yeah. too as well. Yeah, my and so, on my dad's side. Yeah, yeah. so when you start talking about when they start talking about uh, Columbus Day and that Columbus was a murderer and Columbus brought disease to America and, and all these sort of things as if disease wasn't already here as, as if disease, as if murder had never been invented before, you it's, know, uh, that's why I mentioned world history. Yes. Um, it's, we can always point the finger, which we do easily. And sometimes we need to, mm-hmm. but if you really look in the mirror, We've all contributed to this to the ugliness of the world. At some Amen. Point. We yes. all have. Yes. Um, uh, my native brothers, the Cherokee had my people in slavery. Yes, the and, yeah. The Cherokees <laughs> enslaved Africans, no doubt about it. Totally. And did so right, even man. and and did so even after the end of slavery in America. On the on the, many of them kept their slaves uh, because they could. Yes, they did. Yeah. I had to get the government to go in and tell the Chickasaw to let them go. Right. <laughs> well, you know, and, you know, and like you just said, we've all contributed to the ugliness of the world. Uh, no one can lay claim to piety in this world. No, no, no one can lay claim that we're all perfect and we've never done anything. I'm just surprised that the the black community, and we're talking about fighting labels. Yes, yes, indeed. You in a music genre that really goes against the traditional path of, of a black musician. How did you, what, what response have you received from the black community about the type of genre you're in and describe that genre to the audience? Well, um, just give a little background. As I said, my household was, was a different type of household. My dad had a record collection of thousands of records. He'd go from big band with 
uh, Joe uh, Count Basie and Joe Williams mm-hmm. to B.B. King <laughs> to William Jennings to um, Glenn Campbell to uh, Ella Fitzgerald. I've heard it all. You got baptized, brother. I heard it all. Yes, and sir. I knew, and my, and I, my dad was the kind of person to say, close your eyes and listen to the music because you can really under, hear it. You can't. He would close his eyes and sip on a little whiskey and listen. Mm-hmm. And I acquired that from him. Uh, by listening to Ray Charles and those country, you know, he did his country western album, mm-hmm. I was hooked from that point on. It didn't mean I didn't listen to my George Clinton song. Right. But also in that song, I had that country western that I enjoyed listening to. Right. It came to fruition when I started working on TV shows such as American Chopper and uh, Southern Steel, Milwaukee Island. I had to create music right. that had those genres. I basically created my genre that I do now. Yes, I sir. I soul, country, southern rock, and, with, and traditional instruments with my kind of blues rock that's on a plane. Mojo Gumbo. Yeah. And no joke gumbo. You stir it up, throw it in, that's the phrase you get. <laughs> now, the label, the problem, the people have always accepted me once they hear what I do. As far as black, my black brothers and sisters who I'm still, I'm, I have tons of friends, they, they're they getting into it now because they're hearing that, I think because of the, the way that we are in different parts of the country, there's a southern accent, there's a New England accent, New England accent. I think what throws them off is the twang sound, right. which predominates country. Um, I don't have that sound because I have a, 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 I sing more blues vocal type of soul vocal, mm-hmm. but I still use the fiddle and the pedal steel. And I think I'm bridging gaps with a lot of people when they hear that instrument. And uh, country, uh, but in Nashville itself, uh, I've had a, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the reception has been amazing. Uh, folks are not sure what to get when I show up. You know, I show up and I say, man. And I've even had people tell me, well, I ain't never heard of Brother D. Simple Man, but I live in Skinner. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, you know, that's a big thing now on Facebook, though, is a lot of cover tunes, people covering certain artists. And you said Ray yeah. Charles, and, I, you know, I sort of forgotten that Ray Charles sort of had a country style almost in some of his, well, in he, some of his music. Well, he put out two albums. Yeah. He had a number one country album above everybody. Uh, Modern Sounds of Country Western by Ray Charles. Well, the, the, you know, black folks in general don't even know that. No, because they it don't. Do, it they don't get it doesn't get discussed when you start talking about Ray Charles. We think of him right. more of a soulful, you know, um type of singer, piano of course. Yes. And you know, they don't think that well, you know, Ray Charles had a you know, two country albums out, you know, at one time. Yes. Let me tell you, one of the most endearing moments, I, I love TV, I love, I love watching those country artists come out like, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Um, uh, I can't think of him right now, but uh, Glenn Campbell. I, yeah. I used to watch these old shows with the Smothers Brothers and all that. But one of the shows on YouTube, if anyone would like to watch it, just watch how endearing the legendary Johnny Cash is with his friend, Ray Charles. Right. Ray Charles goes on the Johnny Cash show, and June Cash, and they're just having a ball. They're talking about the new country album, and uh, Ray says, you know, I've been working up one of your songs, which I heard. He says, he's in my place. Go on. And Ray Charles did his own spin of Ring of Fire. Wow. And he did that at the Ryman Auditorium, Back in the early 70s, late 60s, when that show was on TV, where I guess where they shot the show, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you know, and, 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 you know, it's obvious your music IQ is very high. You know, and of course, we could probably talk for days. And I know we oh, have talked for days. That. I know we've talked <laughs> for days about different subjects, political, yes. politics, yes, music, yes. and whatnot. In about a minute or two, I want you to tell the audience again where they can not only buy your music and get your music, but where they can find you, the Facebook page or, or, okay. or Internet. You got it. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, right now. Okay. Uh, 
on, on you can find me on on Facebook under my fan page, which is E Rock D E E R O C K. You can go to my website, which is D Rock dot com. One word. You can also find me on Spotify, all of his outlets. So if you go to Spotify and pull up D Rock, you're gonna find two albums. Yes, sir. My first album, The Road Ain't Long, and you'll find my current album called Back Road Symphony. And Back Road Symphony is a little less country, more multi-genre, mm-hmm. but you'll still get the country flavor in the Southern Rock and a little bit more soul in that in my newest one. Wow. So we're have our current. And of course, you are getting ready to go on tour in uh, yes. in November. Uh, yes. And you say it's going to be a, probably a short tour at this time, but there's bigger things yeah, to come. I, 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 I went first of um, November first, and I'll be out. Well, I, I leave on the 29th and head back on the uh, 9th of November. So we're just we're hitting about four shows in there, and then uh, we'll come on back. But that'll be enough to, to get the establishment. I've got some English publications that yes, are sir. letting folks know that I'm coming. So it should be really, really awesome. Well, I tell you what, brother, I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to come on and chop this up about fighting the labels. And I think the audience is going to learn more about you and about what you do. And I hope that more people will follow and download your music. And I want to tell you, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Hey, thank you, Al. And we're both fighting the labels, man. And thank you because what you do is amazing. And I hope your listeners know that you're an amazing, tremendous writer, storyteller. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. God bless you and God bless this country. You got it, brother. Of course, we just had D-Rock on the show. And if you would like to find more about D-Rock and what he's doing, of course, he he told you you can find him at D-D-E-E, Rock, R-O-C-K. Find him on Facebook, find his fan page. And, of course, um, you you can do these things, too. Look, talent is not limited to just one person. One person does not have all the answers to every problem. So D rock and individuals like that have come along in my life and have made my life more full of knowledge and full of information. I learned some things on, on the show today that I did not realize, or I had sort of forgotten uh, like Ray Charles and being in the country. And also about the artists of his day that he spoke about with jazz, big band country, R and B, all these things that influenced him. But the number one thing you have to take away is that family and roots are important. Influences are important. Things that influence your life, things that you indulge in, things that you are part of are very important. Of course, don't forget that this month is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We want to recognize that every time that we come on or wherever we're talking, We try to bring that to people's attention because it affects us all. It affects every family, no matter what your color. I get tired and I don't have time to go into this on this show. I get tired of labels. I get tired of being told that I have to think this way or I have to think and do this way. Or why can't you do it the way that we've always done it? You know how we do things. I, that's what number, the number one thing that you want to get under my skin and get get me riled up or get my feathers all flustered is to tell me, well, you know, you know how we do it. No, I don't know how we do it. I know how I do it. I know how I know how others have done it, but I don't know how we do it. You know, that's a that's so boxed in, so crab in the bucket sort of thinking. But of course, um wanna thank everyone. Don't forget, every Wednesday you do, you can have a good we got a great guest coming on next week. We got Burgess Owens, the great NFL player that's gonna be coming on as our guest next week. So we want you to join join us every Wednesday. Live at I may be wrong, but I don't think so dot com. And of course, you can then follow us on Facebook. You can also f- download the podcast and you can find us on YouTube, all the outlets. Of course, we're getting ready to wrap the show up for the day. Want to thank you and thank everyone that has been a part of the show today. And of course, as always, I want to tell you, God bless you. God bless America. God bless our children. And peace. 
You've been listening to Alfonso Ashworth, the Barry White of Podcast Radio. Go forth and share his message. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. Remember, no two people can ever occupy the same place at the same time. You were uniquely and wonderfully made. Born an original. Don't die a copy. God bless. Peace. Peace.